Good morning. We greet everyone in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is also head and chief elder of our Moravian Church. And we are especially glad this morning to have visitors with us. We invite visitors and members to please sign the friendship registers that are in each of the pews. And we are glad that you are here and pray that everyone will find meaning and purpose as we worship together on this special day. This morning we celebrate Holy Communion in commemoration of Jesus Christ, who is our chief elder. All Christians of any denominational background are welcome to join in communion this morning with us. All members of Fairview are pleased asked to stay following worship for our annual church council. We will elect members to serve on our boards of elders and trustees and hear a budget presentation. So please stay. We'll have a short break for coffee and, and refreshment, and then we'll come back into the sanctuary for our council meeting at that time. I do want to thank our band for giving us and playing for us the preludes for, uh, for this morning. It is always a treat and it is a special Moravian uh, privilege, I think it is, to have the band play before our communion and love feast services, and we appreciate all that they bring to our worship services. We also want to thank Leslie Cox, our student intern, who will be assisting with Holy Communion this morning as an approved candidate of the Moravian Church. She can do that, and we look forward to her participation in the service in that way. As we move to our prayer time, we bring before God the prayer concerns, trusting in our Lord's responsiveness to the needs of his people. Among our church family and friends, several are in need of God's healing presence. We lift up Catherine Hooser this morning, who has been hospitalized. Also, Bob Cox, who has been ill and has lost his brother. Uh, Geneva Wilson is under hospice care. Bob Minish, Walter Tuttle, Alden Dole, and David Schaefer. Katie, H Katie Hubbard's dad was in an automobile accident and is having surgery. We want to keep him in our prayers as well. We do offer a prayer of thanksgiving for the health progress for Pam Tatum. Uh, we received word this week that Pam has made uh, good progress and hopes to return to Winston-Salem. Uh, she's been in the hospital in Charlotte for a number of months, so we're glad for that. We also want to pray for and give thanks for our veterans who have served our country to help safeguard the freedoms that we all enjoy. And we pray for our nation in this time of transition and leadership on all levels of government. Are there additional prayer concerns to be shared in our church family this morning? Oh, thank you, John. John says that, that Judy was in a car wreck, but she's okay, but... Um, somewhat bruised, so we will keep Judy Snyder in our prayers. Other prayer concerns? Let us then go to our Lord in a time of prayer. O oh God, we thank you that when we know ourselves to be in your presence and when we offer ourselves for service, our lives are transformed. We offer to you our praise for the blessings of life as we experience the leading of your spirit and as we share fellowship in Christ's name this day. Healing Lord, we lift up to you those who have been named this morning and we pray your restoring spirit to be with each one. We lift up to you Catherine, Bob Cox, Geneva, Bob Minish, Walter, Alden, Pam, David Schaffer. Judy Snyder. O oh Lord, give them and all others who are struggling in body, mind, or spirit 
a strong sense of your peace. We are grateful, Heavenly Father, for the veterans who have served this country and who we, who we have recognized this week in our nation. We pray your safekeeping in providing for them and their families. We are reminded that their service and sacrifice has helped ensure that freedoms that we enjoy today, including the freedom to worship, are freedoms that we should never take for granted. God of every nation, help our nation and our new leaders to look to you for guidance and wisdom. Our nation is divided and needs to come together, O oh Lord. And you are the only one that can make this happen through the power of your infinite love. May all our elected leaders, from the president to the Congress, to the leaders at the state and local levels, be led to work together for peace and for justice. May we do our part to look to the future with hope, trusting in your divine guidance to bring about your will for our beloved nation. O oh God, on this day of worship, may we hear an echo of your glory in our singing, in our prayers, and in your word. Your dwelling place is with us. We honor you this day. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Chief Elder. Amen. Open up your book of worship to page 234 for our reading this morning. We praise you, O oh God. Creation worships you. Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim, the seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. 
No fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all praise, Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. Flesh to us free, you only chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come, then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood. Bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Keep us today, Lord, from all sin. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we have put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. Let us never be put to shame. Let us greet one another in Christ's name. As our chief elder provides for all we need, experience life in abundance. In response to the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, let us bring forth our offering. pray. Provider God, these gifts are a reflection of your grace and generosity. We bring them to support and encourage ministry that expresses Christ's care and compassion. Bless their use for the sake of those we serve and the causes we uphold in the name of Jesus, our chief elder, we pray. Amen.
may be seated. Good morning. I now have the privilege of reading God's Word. Our Old Testament lesson is from the prophet Ezekiel. And please open your pew Bible if you don't have one. It's in the pew. or It's always wonderful to read along with Holy Scripture. What a privilege to read. Ezekiel 34, verses 11 to 16. You'll find it after Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, and there's Ezekiel. This is God the true shepherd. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. The shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep. So I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them from out I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries. Excuse me. And will bring them unto their own land. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they should lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David. He shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Our New Testament lesson today is from Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 to 16. Here we read of Jesus, the great high priest. Excuse me. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Here ends the reading of God's word. Praise be to God. The sermon text for this day is from John chapter 10, verses 1 to 10. These are the words of Jesus as he speaks with the disciples. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. 
When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. On November the 13th, 1741, exactly 275 years ago today, it was announced to the churches of the Unitas Fratrum, that is the Moravians, that the church would no longer appoint one of its members to serve in the leadership role of the chief elder, the highest position of the church. Instead, Jesus Christ would be the only head of the Moravian church. We celebrate that monumental decision today with the service of Holy Communion. A little background on how this came to be. Two months before the November 13th announcement, several Moravian leaders gathered in Count Zinzendorf's London residence. Leonard Dover was the current chief elder, a competent spiritual and humble man who firmly resolved that he was going to give up this office. It was too much for him. The responsibilities for leading an ever-growing church had become, way, had become far greater than he could manage. Various successors to Leonard Dober were mentioned, but the lot came up negative for each one. And after several days of wrestling with what they should do, the idea came to the group in Zinzendorf's words to accept the Savior in this office. And they all agreed and were deeply moved that they had come together around this spirit-led proposal. So they submitted this question to God by the lot, whether this signified that the Savior himself would undertake the office of chief elder of the Moravian church. And the answer was a resounding yes. And since that date, September the 16th, 1741, no person has held the office of chief elder of the Moravian church but Christ alone. Holding up Jesus Christ as chief elder is a witness grounded in the structure of the church itself that Moravians will follow no one but Jesus. Any voice we might listen to, any word we might heed, must in the end be the voice of Jesus and the Word, capital W, Word, who is Christ. Now the gospel lesson assigned for this day is a wonderful lesson, a passage from John chapter 10 where Jesus continues to talk about himself and his ministry using powerful metaphors. And in this case, the metaphors for sheep and shepherds. And listen to Jesus' words again that I paraphrase slightly. I am your shepherd. I guide you into safety in the sheepfold at night, calling you each by name as you pass by. And then I lead you out to a good pasture and give you nourishment. Beware of the false leaders and deceivers out there who bring only hopelessness and destruction. I am the real thing. I came so that you would have life, and not just a little, but life overflowing. What those Moravian leaders did in London in 1741 was to profess that in our life together as a church, we would follow only one shepherd, only one, Jesus Christ. 
And only in him would the church have life and have it in abundance. And only in him could, could we be found in his sheepfold at the end of the day. To say that Jesus gives us abundant life is to say that we have overflowing life. So I want to ask a question this morning for us to ponder. When, when have we experienced life that just overflows? Maybe. We experience it when we feel that we are right in tune with God's desire for us. Sometimes I hear people say, after a strong sense of God's presence, I hear them say, this just feels right. That's confirmation of the Spirit. That's life overflowing. Maybe we have come to a time of impending death of a loved one. And though we are grieving deeply, we have a sense of peace because we feel the guiding hand of God's Spirit in our life. That is life overflowing. Maybe in the middle of serving someone who cannot repay us through a clothing closet like we have here at Fairview, a food pantry, a shepherd-centered dinner, a nursing home visit. As Mother Teresa said, we see the face of Christ in their faces, the ones that can't possibly repay us. When we see the face of Christ in their faces, we feel life overflowing. And this life that we receive as sheep of the Good Shepherd is so abundant and so overflowing that there is no way we can keep it all to ourselves. We have to share it. Life in Christ overflows. It always overflows. And even in an uncertain national landscape, even in an uncertain world, we are still called to share abundant life with others who need it. If we think that the gifts of God in Christ are to be celebrated only privately, we are sadly mistaken. Or if we think that in our fear and anxiety there isn't enough to go around and we hunker down and keep it to ourselves, we are sadly mistaken, and more than that, we miss out on the grace and peace and love and hope and joy that God gives. The free-flowing stream of his abundant life. The Moravian Church, Christ our chief elder. What we have experienced since 1741 through all the ups and downs of life and so many generations is the constant, guiding, life-giving presence of Jesus, the Son of God, the Good Shepherd in our world. Our Savior will not abandon us now or ever. So, we do celebrate today and in the months to come the abundant life God has already shared with us. We look with hope and anticipation to what God will do next. God is not finished with us. Neither is God finished with the world. He created. He has a plan. And it is being carried out. Far from it that God is finished. And because this is absolutely true, we can still expect great things from God. And we can attempt great things for God. Thanks be to God. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds to celebrate this wonderful and holy meal together. We are invited to turn page three in the communion booklet to the service for Holy Communion in celebration of the chief eldership of Jesus Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.
Amen. Thanks be to God. Let us stand. Let us pray. With thankful hearts, O oh God, we come now to celebrate this holy meal with you. Indeed, we are blessed to be part of Christ's body, the church, and guided by the church's head, Jesus Christ. We know, O oh Lord, that in accepting his leadership, so wrong. Draw us even closer to our Savior through this celebration of Holy Communion, we pray. We are most grateful, dear Lord, that through our chief elder, we have the forgiveness of our wrongs, the purification of our hearts, and the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. Hear us now as together we join voices and pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
Lord Jesus Christ said, take, eat, this is my body which is given. By your divine presence, by the holy sacraments, by all the merits of your life, sufferings, death, and resurrection, bless and comfort us, gracious Lord and God. In the same way, after supper, our Lord Jesus Christ took the cup gave thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this when often, whenever you drink it in remembrance of me.
us stand. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Drink from this, all of you. Do this whenever you drink it in presence of me. Christ, the Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. And to us your peace. Amen. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. 